Okay, we're back on. So I like keeping paper towels around. We really use them a lot. Uh, I biodegrade them later on. Uh, I get a lot of mileage out of one paper towel. I know a lot of people probably think it's a waste. We use hand towels that we wash too, but um, you get good at, at saving them. Eventually they go through a cycle. First I use them in the kitchen. Later on I use them to clean in the cat room, clean floors, you know, as they progressively get dirtier. So I'm brushing this off so we have a clean surface for our watermelon. It's a small watermelon today. Okay, of course everybody has a different way to cut a watermelon. This has already been washed. I'm going to make a flat surface on this side that I can prop it up in the refrigerator for when I'm done. This isn't cold. I normally like to have them cold in advance. So I'm going to cut it just enough so that it doesn't leak, but it's got a little flat surface there. I actually cut that one too much, but it'll still work. So now my watermelon will stand up in the fridge when I'm done. Um, cut about that much off to, so that I can start getting good slices. And this thin knife, again, works awesome because um, this over here, because it is, it's not in its own way. Those thick knives are harder to cut with because the, you're pushing not just the cutting blade through, but the whole knife through whatever you're cutting. So I like these to cut everything with, not just fish. So I'll cut these up and I give them to the kids just like that. Or what I sometimes do if I'm making something that it's part of a meal, a breakfast or something, I'll cut the, the rinds off individually for them, okay? But normally I just give them to like that and they like them sometimes they like to make faces out of them or whatever. Okay, this one's kind of big enough. This isn't the best or the worst. It's a kind of in-between watermelon. Put that over here. Let's see. What tastes like? Okay, good. Not the sweetest. Watermelons aren't the way, especially these seedless ones. These don't have the flavor of the watermelons we had when we were growing up in the South. So now, I wouldn't go that much. I would go right about here. What is that? Inch and a half, two inches. And I'm going to cut as straight as I can. I want to keep the whole knife in the watermelon all at the same time so I have one cut. See? There's no little slices in there. Holding it for the camera, I didn't do that good of a job. I'm going to do one more. This time I'm going to try to make it straight. To get the watermelon back to its... Okay, so I have two. Now this is... I'll just put saran wrap over this and pop it in the fridge. Um, put my saran wrap here. I put tape here on the saran wrap because I kept losing it inside of the saran wrap. Just go like that. It won't cut... I won't lose it the next time. And so I like to kind of do it as I go, keep everything organized as I go. This will be really fresh. Pop this into the fridge. And we're ready to use it. No problem. Okay. Now, there's a couple different approaches here. I usually hold it and you will cut your fingers if you don't have practice with this. So I'm going to stick it in. And if, if you notice, I'm, I've learned how to hold it so my fingers are out of the way and I don't, I'm not slicing them off. I'm just slicing the watermelon. And I'll go all the way around. And it's going to fall here in a second. See? And sometimes I'll chop these up. Like I didn't do a very good job right here because I'm, I'm not holding it the way I normally would because I'm trying to do it so you can see it. And I'll give those to the kids too, and they like them. And they'll just eat whatever I didn't cut off properly. So we'll put these over here. We'll eat them later. Uh, along with that sandwich. Okay, now, this is for, <laughs> we have a lot bigger, like twice this size. So what I like doing is I like making cubes. So I will pull the knife through the watermelon one way, and then I'll pull the knife through the watermelon 
the other way. I'm dragging it towards me. So I'm not dulling the whole blade, just the tip is touching the wood. See? And I don't know if I make this look easy or not, but I do this all the time. So then you're going to get you get your bowl, your plate, and I just slide, I move my cutting board, and I just slide the whole kit and caboodle into a bowl or onto a plate, and I'm ready to go. There's okay, this is this tell me if this watermelon's good. Okay. Since it tastes like mm. you like it or don't like it? Uh uh. uh. Okay. Well, there you have it from the expert. This is not the sweetest watermelon. It's plus it's not cold. Mmm. It's not summer. We're in November, so it's amazing we even have watermelon, right? And do it one more time with this. Same thing. You might some people would would want to go in and then start cutting. I didn't cut this straight, so this is how I usually do it. There's a thousand ways to cut a watermelon, right? This is just the way that I do it. And if I got the rind, pro cut it properly, I won't save any of this. I'll just chop it up so it decomposes faster in the compost. Same principle. We'll do our square thing. One, two, three. The opposite way. And when you make these really thick, they kind of make, it makes tubes. Sometimes I cut them like two, two inches. And these look real nice in a bowl. Just like that, just little squares. Put this on our plate. Should have gotten a bowl because it would have illustrated it a little bit better. There you go. That's how I cut watermelon, if that helps anyone. See? Squares. I think they're better when they're cold. And sometimes I'll keep these as a snack at night. I like getting lots of fluid. And watermelon is basically distilled water. And that's very good for your body.